So obviously we know that we have a 100 gigawatt target for 2022, even though the rooftop segment looks like they're scaling down. But MNRE is very confident that overall they'll be able to achieve 100. We've more than, you know, doubled capacity in the last calendar year alone. So what that means is there is a huge demand for solarization, for equipment, for EPC, for development on the, uh, you know, capacity addition side. And perhaps we're going to be adding over 10 gigawatts, maybe 15 gigawatts every year if we have to go, you know, on a linear progression scale. Uh, even though rooftop is small, rooftop is also about almost a gigawatt and a half as of now. And it's as a percentage, it's growing very, very rapidly. Just to give you an example of where we were, Amplus works primarily in the distributed rooftop segment. Uh, 2016, we were 30 megawatts, and today we are about 250 megawatts of assets under operation or you know, under, in the process of construction. And our solar parks, which you know began 10 years, 12 years ago as 5, 8, 10, 25 megawatts, we are now talking of gigawatt scale solar parks as well. So this is the speed at which we need deployment. What do we have in terms of domestic available? And this includes the defunct units, about 8 gigawatts on modules and 3 on cells. 1 gigawatt of modules alone is Adani. So this is all that is available to the industry. This is obviously not enough to meet our annual requirements. 93% across all segments of quality of manufacturing today is in China. If you look at the global demand supply position, there is already oversupply, overcapacity in the market. So obviously here for India, the challenge is we have a huge demand supply gap. Okay. In terms of cost quality competitiveness, what happens? Why are Chinese components cheaper? They have low cost electricity. Working with silicon is very, very energy intensive. They have huge scale. Each large Chinese conglomerate has the capacity that the total Indian, uh, Indian manufacturers together have. They have the backward integration, if not within the same company, at least within the, within the country. Right from you know silicon ingots wafer cells to module manufacturing. For us, right, eight gigawatts is not a small capacity. But just go one step back, cells. It's down to three. It's less than half. So even at the Indian level, other than the last stage of integration of cells, we don't have much happening internally. And primarily, the domestic industry has worked because of the domestic content requirement that the government has put in, especially on the public sector and the government projects. <coughs> Otherwise, if I were to simply take a like to like comparison, nine out of 10 times, things work more competitively when I use imported modules and high quality imported modules. We're not just talking of, you know, everything that comes out of China is not rubbish, neither is everything that comes out of India. All across the world, you have, you know, people working at different value systems. One of the reasons, again, the Indian industry is struggling to create a supply network is we hardly had a feed-in tariff regime. We jumped very, very quickly from feed-in tariff to reverse bidding. Advantages, disadvantages, yes. Uh, greatest advantage seems to have been is the, you know, the real value, or at least these developers seem to think these projects are commercially viable, which is why I presume they are bidding, you know, two and a half rupee solar tariffs on the grid scale segment. So that has been the advantage. No, just a very, very quick comparison with the wind, wind industry. They had a long regime of feed-in tariff. They have now gone into reverse bidding. So what that feed-in tariff regime allowed them was to develop a very, very robust supply network along the entire value chain. Because the solar industry did not have that, we are struggling. So again, for the government, and it's not an easy balancing act to play, we have a solarization ambition and we also have a make in India ambition. Sometimes these are going to be contrary, contradictory, and going to pull you apart in different directions. So we now you know, also need to kind of make up a mind, where are we headed? Is it more important to have solar energy? Or is it more important to have solar energy manufacturing systems? Or something in between? What will happen if we have higher duties, safeguard duties, et cetera, et cetera? See, the grid scale plants, two and a half rupees is the tariff. Rooftop, the tariffs are more than double of that. 
And this is a very, very price sensitive segment. This has just taken off. It may, you know, it, the commercial viability, what we call, you know, the grid parity may just disappear for the rooftop segment because this is completely price sensitive. These are usually the, the people who install our private sector and profit seems to be the only motive and rightly so that drives the private sector. Uh, what I would urge people to do is, you know, even if we've missed the boat on manufacturing in the solar, uh, in the PV area, storage, which is very, very new and uh, very encouraging to see so many people talk about storage on various parts of it. Eventually, renewable energy without storage, without storage integration is not going to happen, especially considering a scenario of 20, 30 years from now where we're expecting at least 50% of installed capacity from renewable sources. Obviously, the downside is that our solar story is almost entirely dependent on China with or without the safeguard duties. Even if you get in the safeguard duties, you don't have ingots, you don't have wafers. So it is still going to be China dependent. Do I enjoy buying from China? Obviously not. It makes everything difficult for me, you know, enforcing a contract. It's a different, you know, it's a longer uh, uh, supply, you know, the supply chain is more convoluted. Delivery times are longer. And the Chinese suppliers have almost have commoditized modules, which is making it even more difficult for me. So it's something we do out of necessity. It's something the world does out of necessity. This, you know, if, what if we don't have solar manufacturing in India? There is still good news. There is still an upside. There's hardly any PV manufacturing in the US. However, installation is very big and huge amounts of job additions were happening in the installation segment in America. O&M is going to be a massive industry. Imagine so many millions of rooftop systems and they'll re each one will require at least 12 to 15 maintenance uh, you know, cycles in a year for 25 years. There is an opportunity for storage management systems. You know, you're talking of a module with, an, uh, you know, with a separate inverter. How about a module which is just a plug and play system? That module contains the inverter, that module contains the battery, that module contains everything. Plug into your socket and you're ready to go. It looks like you know, a pipe dream, but it's not. I know that people are working on it. If not today, we are getting there. Maybe five years, 10 years, 15 years, that I don't know, but that is definitely going to happen. Another, you know, I'd like to end with this. Somebody talked about, you know, even manufacturing of solar modules is very energy intensive, right? Today, we're probably using thermal energy to produce it. So it's starting with a carbon footprint of its own. It may take about 24 months to erase this carbon footprint. If we are importing the entire modules and setting them up, Perhaps at least for our air, we are starting as carbon neutral. So somebody else is bearing the carbon footprint, but we are starting as the carbon neutral in our own country. Uh, that's really about it. Thank you so much.